Now it gives examples of different kinds of gifts that we can use and uh, that we can have. It says, if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Now I believe that this is different to the office of a prophet. I believe this is also different to the gift of prophecy that could come in a meeting. This is a way of being and it would certainly tie in with those other things on occasions. But it's the ability to have a divine perspective and to see the real issues and to speak out the real issues that are pertinent to a situation uh, by the inspiration of God. Uh, God really enables some people to see clearly what is happening, what's going on, what are the issues involved in a situation, what are the spiritual forces at work. These things overlap and there's many shades of meaning. But a person with a prophetic motivation is often seeking to bring correction, often seeking to suggest a direction, often seeking to exhort people in ways of righteousness and to fix things which are corrupt in the body of Christ. It's kind of like a surgeon. And uh, not everybody has that motivation or that heart. And sometimes people with the gift of mercy look at a prophet and, and think that they're terrible because they don't seem to have much compassion or mercy. But it's also possible for a prophet to have great mercy and God wants us all to develop mercy, no matter who we are. So there's just different aspects. You can have more than one of these gifts functioning in your makeup, in your life. But let, it says, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Don't go beyond what you are certain that God has shown you. And if you're an immature Christian, you're a new Christian, uh, don't overextend yourself in the area of prophecy. Because many people seek to gain attention for themselves through prophecy and through being prophetic. Uh, and they love to bring up sensational and controversial matters in order to attract a following, in order to validate themselves in some way. Be careful about that. We need to be sure that we're not going beyond what God has really given us because we're going to give account for every word that we speak according to the scriptures. So when we speak words that go beyond our true level of God-given faith into areas of presumption, things that we've made up, things that we imagine, things that we suppose, and we want to call that the word of the Lord, we are coming into a dangerous area. So prophecy is one of the more dangerous gifts. It's got a lot of power for good, but it's also got power to be abused. People with a prophetic nature, they can get into error very easily by being puffed up in pride, by imagining things that are not really God and declaring them to be God. So just be careful that Go with God-given faith. If you don't see a track record of what God is showing you coming to pass, be careful about making more and more prophetic announcements. Now, it also talks about ministry, serving. Let's use our ministry. So, we should all have a servant's heart, a desire to do the things that are necessary to make things work. And some people are especially gifted in this area they're especially effective servants and they have a heart just to enable other people to fulfill their ministry by providing the resources or facilitating activities, putting out chairs, looking after sound equipment, making sure things work, running around, doing jobs. Things that some people might say are low or of little value, but I tell you what, if those things don't happen, then a lot of important things won't happen. And God appreciates the people who serve and do not stand in the limelight necessarily because these are the people that are receiving their reward later, not always on this earth. I think people with public profiles and people that are seen a lot, public speakers in the body of Christ, they get a lot of their reward in this life. People will praise them, people will give them money, and so on and so forth. The servant-hearted people who are just serving in the background with a gift of helps or making things go, making things work, 
These people often don't get a lot of credit. And we can be sure that at the final judgment of believers, they're going to receive great reward if they've done it faithfully, if they've done it as unto the Lord with a good attitude. So praise the Lord. I think we should all be serving in practical ways. We should never consider ourselves above you know, helping set up the equipment, getting things working, doing stuff. In business, those who serve are the ones that are appreciated. Those who add value are the ones that are paid well. And so we need to seek to excel in service. Enhance our skills so that we can serve better. Perhaps you could learn video editing or animation or some craft or trade like writing that would enable you to serve. Maybe you could learn how to fix cars, to fix computers, to fix equipment. There are many, many ways you can serve. There are many, many areas. This is all part of ministry. And I think that even music can be a form of service. So it's a very enjoyable one. It's something that gives a lot of pleasure. Writing music, singing to the Lord, praising the Lord, being a musician, whatever. That's the kind of thing that's being talked about here as well. Anything that facilitates God's people entering into the presence of God, anything that facilitates the spread of the Word of God, anything that meets the practical needs of people, that service, and some people are especially good at it, and may the Lord bless them. He who teaches in teaching. So obviously there are going to be people who have a teaching gift, who have an ability to communicate. Some people are better at it than others. All of us can teach to some extent when we know the Lord and when we know something. You should teach what you know to other people. But some people are especially gifted in it. Some people are especially good communicators. And there is a role for that in the body of Christ. I think that we've got to be careful of movements where teaching is downplayed and where everything becomes mystical or uh, immediate revelation from God. Nothing is organized systematically in terms of doctrine. That can be a dangerous place to be, you know, where everyone just sits around only and waits for God to inspire them with some thought. It doesn't have to be like that. What God wants is people to teach the Word of God in a systematic way, to teach true doctrine. Uh, there can be times of waiting on the Lord. There can be times of getting prophetic inspiration and ministry like that. But there needs to be the teacher in the body of Christ. Otherwise, people go astray. And we see a lot of false teachers, of course, in the body of Christ. Uh, no matter what your viewpoint is on certain issues, you'll find that there's a Christian or a professed Christian that teaches the exact opposite. And so we need truth in the body of Christ today because the lack of truth will lead people astray and lead people out of the will of God. You know, it says, he who exhorts in exhortation. There's a real gift of exhortation, which means to encourage people, to urge people, to motivate people, to do the right thing, to do what they need to be doing, perhaps to come to Christ, perhaps to repent, perhaps to turn to the Lord, perhaps to use their gifts, perhaps to function, perhaps not to be discouraged. This gift is designed to get people out of discouragement excited about life, motivated, and it's a beautiful gift. And thank God for those people who have it and use it because these are the people that empower others to fulfill their calling and to go on and win the race with God. It says, he who gives with liberality. Now, there's a special gift of giving. We should all give, but some people are especially gifted to give. They've got greater faith. They can give more sacrificially or they can earn more money. They get ideas from God, business ideas perhaps, and they implement them. They earn a lot of money and they can give a lot of money. Now that's a specific calling. Not everybody's called to this. I suppose some pastors would like it if everybody in their church was called in this way and given this gift. But the reality is not everybody's given the same gifts in the body of Christ. We shouldn't push everybody to be the same. However, thank God for people that do give generously, that can give more. And the Bible says they should give with liberality. They should give generously. They should really give the money, not hold onto it tightly, give it towards projects in the kingdom of God, give it towards preachers and missions and things that are important to God. That is a spiritual gift. Perhaps it's your spiritual gift. If it is, I encourage you to use it and see what God wants you to do. 
find out where God wants to you to contribute and help and get involved and make it possible for other people to be blessed. He who leads with diligence has all kinds of leadership gifts. There's administration, there's pastoring, there's being a leader in the fivefold ministry. Whatever leadership role a person may be called to, they need to be more diligent than the people that they are leading. God wants leaders to work hard, to be hardworking, to be diligent, to set an example in this area. God did not set up Christian leadership so that the leader could get everybody else to work for him and he could sit back and just enjoy a luxurious, easy life. True Christian leadership is about serving, it's about servanthood, it's about working hard to be a blessing to others. So if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, if you want to be a leader, you have to be a servant and you have to serve more than other people. You have to do more for others than other Christians. And so those who want to lead, those who want to take positions of prominence and authority should serve and be hardworking and get stuck into it. That's what God wants. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Obviously, people who are called to show mercy to people are called to help those who are in trouble, those who have suffered loss, those who are in pain, those who are grieving. And when people are sad about life, they don't need you to be super sad as well. They don't need people who are going to make them more sad, more depressed. And God doesn't want you to be sad or depressed. God wants you to do it with cheerfulness, with joy, and bring joy where there's sadness, bring hope where there's despair. That's what God wants from people who show mercy in a special way. So there's some different gifts. There are different spiritual gift tests you can do online and in other places that will give you an insight into what is your gift mix, what is your nature that God has given you, your special capacities, where you're strong, where you're not so strong. Seek to work mostly in the areas where you are strong. Because if you work in your strength and other people work in their strengths which are different, the whole body of Christ will be better off rather than everybody working in their area of weakness. Then everybody's going to be relatively ineffective. So God wants us to know the areas he made us strong in and utilize those, be diligent in them, uh, develop them, and be a blessing to somebody else. And you'll find great fulfillment in just being the person God made you to be and fulfilling the ministry that God has given you, aided by certain gifts that he puts in your life. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you.